little bit, Pete, about culture, because I know that you've worked quite hard, just as in New Zealand, yeah. at NZT to create a distinctive new culture. Yeah. Um, and you've sort of characterised it and, and talked a lot about the behaviours mm. that are integral yeah. to, that, to that desired culture. Yeah. How have you done that without managing to denigrate the past or, yeah. you know, um, be disrespectful to the legacy of the yeah. organisation? Um, a couple of points there. First of all, I actually never use the word culture internally. It's not one of my favourite words um, because, I don't know, it's just, it's quite a bit hackneyed and it's like all pervasive. So yeah. I actually use the word character a lot. I don't know why, I just kind of landed there. Um, but to your, to your question... Um, yeah, it's really, really important not to denigrate the past because um, every leader, and this is my experience, uh, I ran a number of organisations where the organisation had been around for a while and if you, did, if you weren't a bit humble about what you'd inherited, uh, I think you were being a bit stupid. So I think a really strong belief that you stand on the shoulders of those before you and almost everybody has lifted the organisation, but almost everyone has their dilemmas that they don't always get right. And so I think you have to have that view. And I definitely, the organisation I inherited, even though it sounds a bit critical, they'd made some massive shifts over the previous decade. And so they left me with a lot to inherit. And in the same way as I express that to you now, I would also say that to the people as well. And it's very important because you've got a lot of people in the organisation who've been there for a long time. So I didn't actively go out to, to denigrate it. Uh, and still don't. The... Um, but what we did, when we did that initial engagement survey, uh, and after we got past the fact that there was a, a leadership credibility issue and there was a directional issue, uh, we then had to, um, yeah, what also came through was some particular characters that were being expressed in the organisation. One thought that we're very siloed, um, and, and people were working just within their own teams, not cooperating across the organisation. Pretty difficult when an organisation like ours, a professional services organisation, you're actually running, running a wraparound business model where the customer gets services from the entire organisation. So if you're working in silos, it's quite a difficult construction and you have to get past that. Um, so that was the silos, we got that. We were very, very orientated towards not making a mistake. The organisation had a bad audit a couple of years ago and people got very gun shy. So there were layers upon layers upon layers of risk, what they called risk management and systems compliance, which got reflected to the customer in terms of bureaucracy and really lumpy interface with the customer. So that was um, a sort of compliance. Uh, that also is related to the fact that we're quite slow uh, and so, you know, people in the culture survey and in the customer survey as well, the whole word bureaucratic came up and lack of autonomy and people not able to move quickly towards the customer. Yeah. Even though people really wanted to do the best thing by the customer, this, in their view, the organisation wasn't letting them. So we had this silo, uh, we had this compliance orientation or risk aversion, uh, and we, we, we considered ourselves to be quite slow. And that was all coming from the people. So when we reset the character of the organisation, we reset it effectively as an opposite to those, to those basic um, uh, core driving, um, debilitating beliefs. Uh, and so the characters were one team, counterbalance the silo, um, uh, agile to get over the speed, um, adventurous, to take on, you know, you're allowed to take risks here, you're empowered to take risks, and astute. Astute was always there, but it's a core part of the value proposition. We need to know what we're talking about commercially. So those days became the characters. We actually had a longer list at the start, but you know, a huge believer in simplicity, so uh, we actually cranked down the characters so you know I can now remember those characters. I think any more than three, max four, you just can't remember them. And so you have to crank them down so you, people can lodge them to memory. And then, then it was just about living those characters and, and finding lots and lots of proof points and recognition points around those characters.